So Sony's fresh new Xperia 5 Mark III smartphone may have launched all the way back in April, but it's taken four long ass months for it to finally work its way here to Techspert Towers. Oh Sony, you massive bloody teasers. And like previous models, the Xperia 5 Mark III sports very similar premium style specs and features to that Xperia 1 Mark III flagship smartphone, except here in a more compact, comfortable to fondle form factor, and with some of the more extreme specs like that 4K display just whittled out in order to bring the asking price under a thousand pounds. In fact it'll only cost you 900 quid. Still brings a few tears to my eyes but at least you'll probably only have to sell a single kidney to actually afford one. But enough jibber jabber let's whip the Xperia 5 Mark III on out of its box take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Okay so besides the Xperia 5 Mark III what do you get in the box? Well you got one mains adapter with cheeky pop-up action you got a bit of trouser rustling Type-C to Type-C USB action. And yeah, that's basically it. Nice and easy. So of course, no real surprises when it comes to the design of the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III, very similar to last year's Xperia 5 Mark II. And of course, that Xperia 1 Mark III flagship smartphone, which I fully reviewed, just a bit more dinky. It's a 6.1 inch device, definitely quite compact for a 2021 smartphone. And at 168 grams, it's practically a welterweight as well. And the Xperia 5 Mark III is completely constructed from glass as well, front and back. It is Gorilla Glass 6 as well so nice and tough should prove quite scratch resistant you don't get a gorilla glass victus display unlike the xperia 1 mark 3 flagship smartphone but to be honest in my personal experience i have found that gorilla glass 6 is more scratch resistant than gorilla glass victus so that's good news here but it is also less drop resistant it's a very tall sleek design as usual this is of course the black model but you can also grab the sony xperia 5 mark 3 in green or pink if you prefer slightly more vibrant less boring hues and as usual, the Xperia 5 Mark III is IP68 water and dust resistant, just like last year's model and just like that Xperia 1 Mark III flagship. Over on the right side, things are rather busy. You've got that edge-mounted fingerprint sensor as well as a volume rocker. You've got a dedicated Google Assistant button and also a shutter button for the camera. Whereas over here on the left edge, things are considerably less busy. You've just got that pull-out SIM tray and that's it. And that dishes up space for two SIM cards simultaneously. Although if you do want to expand your storage on your Xperia 5 Mark III by slipping in a micro SD memory card, you'll have to do that in a second SIM tray. And then as with other Sony blows from 2021, yes, you do get a good bit of headphone jack action up top. All right, so let's get this a little more for all set up and then we'll take you on a full-on tour of the rest of the hardware and the software. So, so far, the software experience here on the Xperia 5 Mark III, unsurprisingly, basically the same as what you'll get on the Xperia 1 Mark III. It's a fairly stock version of Android 11, but with that Xperia UI chucked on top. This adds a distinctive look and feel to your desktops and the menus and everything. Uh, allows you to do a little bit of customization as well, although not quite as much as some other launches. It does add a fair few bonus features as well, quite a few of which we'll explore here in this unboxing, starting with the likes of SideSense. This is a fully customizable sidebar, which you can actually shift the position of. You can make it bigger or smaller if you want as well. And a quick double tap of that will just bring up the side sense menu as you can see this is a really convenient way of fast accessing your headphone settings it's also a good way of activating that one-handed mode if you happen to be struggling at any point very handy for any apps where you happen to be struggling to reach the top of that very tall display and speaking of the tall display it's very very handy for split screen multitasking with two apps at once and you can set up the multi window feature here on SideSense which allows you to quickly access two apps that you use side by side quite a lot. Definitely absolutely perfect for watching a bit of YouTube action while browsing the web or whatever else you want to do. It's so one of the disadvantages of the Xperia UI is the fact that on your Sony smartphones you tend to get a lot of crapware pre-installed the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn and even worse is the fact that you can't just quickly and easily uninstall these buggers. They are stuck there on your smartphone unless you do a bit of jiggery pokery behind the scenes. And doing my review model of the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III I've got 128 gigs of storage on there expandable of course via micro SD memory cards and you've got respectable security on here as well although you don't have any face unlock support unfortunately on the Xperia 5 Mark III just like the flagship smartphone but you do get an edge mounted fingerprint sensor which touch wood seems reasonably nippy and responsive so now let's check out that 6.1 inch OLED display here on the Xperia 5 Mark III it's not a 4k eye blaster like the Xperia 1 Mark III but that Full HD plus resolution keeps everything nice and crisp, helped along by the fact that it's not the more spacious of panels anyway. 
You've got that same 21 by 9 widescreen finish as the flagship, uh, so absolutely perfect for more cinematic fare. Not quite so good for older, uh, more boxy TV shows and the rest, but that's something you just have to live with with the Xperia smartphones. And at least it's a full view finish here as well. No annoying notches or little selfie orifices getting in the way of that action. Does seem to have once again a slightly greeny tint uh, when you bump the brightness right the way down you're viewing in a really dark room uh, but that's something i'll be testing out more for my in-depth xperia 5 mark 3 review uh, but certainly on the top brightness levels should be absolutely fine for outdoors use you can play around with the color output you've got the likes of the creator mode if you want uh, to see visuals exactly how the director intended on supported content once again got that x1 reality engine technology in order to boost low res crappy looking content make it look a bit sharp a bit neater and yes as well as the likes of the creator mode you've also got full hdr streaming support in services like netflix as well for enjoying sharp contrast and natural looking visuals and yes of course you've got that 120 hertz refresh rate support just like you did on the sony xperia 5 mark ii although that is knocked off by default so you'll have to chuck that on yourself and the xperia 5 mark iii also boasts a stereo speaker setup as you kind of hope for given the premium price tag so let's bump up the volume see what we got right here on TechSpot if you want to know more and I've also rounded up my favorite budget phones under 300 pounds and 200 pounds if you find you got a little bit less cash to spend and sadly the audio output is a bit tinny once you boost up to that maximum of volume uh, respectable volume levels at least if you drop the volume a little bit then the uh, audio is a bit more clear but yeah not fantastic probably given the uh, the compact size of this thing compared with some rivals but of course if you're going to be enjoying a bit of music on your Xperia 5 Mark III you're going to be wanting to plug in via that headphone jack and if you dive on into to the sound section you've got lots of different settings you can play around with you've got full Dolby Atmos support complete with various presets and you can also tinker with the equalizer those speakers also supposedly support a bit of 360 spatial sound although I didn't really find that worked on the Xperia 1 Mark III but you do have the DSE Ultimate digital sound enhancement engine for any crappy uh, low res tracks just to help boost them make them sound a bit crisper and you got full support for high res audio via that headphone jack and of course you've got Bluetooth support as well with all the usual codecs got a bit of LDEC action so now let's chat performance and the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III like that flagship Move 4 is once again powered by the Snapdragon 888 Qualcomm's well one of Qualcomm's most powerful chipsets right now. It's backed by 8 gigs of RAM here. So as you can see there, the Geekbench score is not quite as strong as the flagship. The single core is just as good. Multi-core a little bit lower, but still very, very solid performance. And I certainly do not see any judders or stumbles when I'm flicking around, loading up apps and such forth. Just to be completely sure, of course, I did spend a lot of time testing out the Xperia 5 Mark III with a good bit of Genshin Impact action, boosted up to the highest detail settings on that 60 frames per second mode as well. And pretty damn smooth, a couple of little stumbles here and there when things got really frantic on screen. I was whipping the camera around really fast, but apart from that, absolutely flawless. I did, however, notice that the phone started to get a little bit toasty after about sort of 20 to 30 minutes of gameplay, nothing too horrific. I did have the Xperia 5 Mark III set to the performance mode in the gaming tools as well. You can access those game settings at any point just by dragging your finger down like so. This gives you access to buttloads of features, including new stuff fresh for the Mark III generation. Classics like the HS power control are back in action, so you can keep the Xperia 5 Mark III powered up without charging the battery simultaneously so it doesn't heat up horrifically. You can set the max screen refresh rate to match the game that you're playing. You can also have a play around with the touch response. The focus settings are really good if you find you keep getting notifications popping up while you're busy trying to teabag your bestie on Call of Duty or whatever. As you can see there, this can hide notifications and any calls you might be getting in. It also does the likes of turn off adaptive brightness and side sense and the camera key, which you might accidentally knock mid-game. If you like to record uh, your gameplay sessions, maybe upload online, for instance, you've got loads of options here, including the ability to buffer 30 seconds of action in the background so you don't miss anything. Uh, you can tweak the audio performance as well. You can change the recording quality now up to 1080p or even record at 120 frames per second as long as you don't mind bumping the resolution back down to just bog standard 720p. And there's a few microphone optimization features uh, in the display and sound section as well. So you can set up exactly what kind of mic you're using, just make sure that your voice is what comes through loud and clear and not all the clatter going on in the background. And if you find you're always being sniped by some bloody camper lurking in the shadows in some online blaster, well, you've even got a gamma razor that you can use just to boost uh, the brightness in those darker areas and catch the little buggers in the act. So as you can see, lots to play around with, but I do have one word of warning for any gamers, and that's the Xperia 5 Mark III, like the Xperia 1 Mark III, before it has some slight touch responsiveness issues. 
So for instance, I found that sometimes when I was trying to change my character here in Genshin Impact, uh, in the middle of an intense battle, I would have to tap a character icon a good two or three times before it actually happened. More often than not, it's fine, but just occasionally you get that frustrating pause where you're desperately trying to change to your favorite character. It takes three or four seconds, by which point you're absolutely having the crap hammered out of you. This problem did seem to be alleviated a little by bumping the touch tracking all the way up here in the custom settings in that game menu, although I might have just got a bit more lucky and it's definitely still a bit of a problem. Now the Sony Xperia 5 Mark III sports a 4,500 milliamp battery, same as that bigger flagship smartphone, so that's great to see. Should hopefully keep you going all day long, especially as you don't have that 4K resolution display to power. Certainly on the Xperia 1 Mark III, I found that that was more than enough charge to get me through a full day, although sometimes I was staggering into bed with just dregs left on that thing. But hopefully, as I say, should get you through a full fairly intensive day here. I will of course be testing the battery life out for my full in-depth Xperia 5 Mark III review. When it comes time to power it back up again, you've got SIM 30 watt wired charging support as that flagship, not exactly the fastest round, certainly at this sort of price point. Quite a lot of much cheaper smartphones do offer twice the wattage. And unfortunately, the wireless charging has been culled for this more compact model as well, which is a damn shame. So if you want to get a bit of chi charging on the go, you're going to have to look elsewhere. Now, one feature that I'll certainly be spending a lot of time with ahead of my in-depth Xperia 5 Mark III review is that camera tech. You've got the same three 12 megapixel camera lenses slapped here on the back of the Xperia 5 Mark III as that flagship smartphone, but you don't get the same time of flight lens. That's the only difference in the hardware setup. And once again, you don't get a bog standard camera app here on the Xperia 5 Mark III. It is the Sony Photo Pro app that you'll be using for absolutely everything. This starts up in the basic mode. This is basically a full auto mode, nice and easy. Just hit that shutter button, or of course tap the, the shutter button up top, and you'll take a snap. As you can see there, you've got the usual eye autofocus shenanigans. This is real time i autofocus works on both humans and animals although sadly here on the xperia 5 mark III, because you don't have that time of flight sensor you don't get the same real-time object tracking as the flagship smartphone and in this basic mode you've got access to a handful of other features including the bokeh mode which just adds a blurry style background effect and of course at any point you can swap from that primary 24 mil 12 megapixel lens to the 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens let's get my fingers out of shot there which has anti uh, distortion uh, for the edges as well so hopefully should prove good for those ultra wide shots and you also have a telephoto lens again 12 megapixel which can actually swap between two focal lengths 70 mil and 105 mil and like the primary lens this once again has optical image stabilization as well to help keep your shots nice and crisp even if your hand is trembling slightly and if you want to shoot a bit of video action well this is the place to do it as well you can uh, just tap this little icon down here as you can see you've got full hdr smart if you are trying to shoot a high contrast scene and as you can see there you can shoot full hd footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second although sadly there's no 4k 60 fps option and if you are shooting in hdr you're going to be limited or if you want slightly more funky effects you've always got that Cinema Pro app as well which can add a whole bunch of filters and make your whole movies look proper cinematic. Again I'll be fully testing that out for my in-depth Xperia 5 Mark III review. And last up of course back in Photo Pro if you are feeling a bit more confident with your photography you can sw swap it off that uh, basic mode and get it into the likes of the programming mode which allows you to mess around with all kinds of different features and toggles. You can play around with all the usual stuff like white balance, ISO levels, the brightness. You can play around with the autofocus settings so for instance change it off continuous autofocus to single or even manual and you can also deactivate the eye autofocus if you want change the focal area and of course once again you can swap between all of the various lenses to get the exact kind of shot you want and you've got the other camera modes you'd expect to find on a dslr as well including shutter speed priority if you're trying to get a really funky a nighttime shot for instance you've got manual exposure and memory recall and last up of course there is an 8 megapixel selfie snapper here on the xperia 5 mark 3 as well although i wouldn't expect too much from that because on the xperia 1 mark 3 definitely felt like a bit of an afterthought the kind of thing that somebody's not really expecting people to use very often at all so it should be all right for your basic sort of shareable shots online that's about it so there you have it that in a nutshell is the sony xperia 5 mark 3 and as i say i've got my sim in there already i'm going to be testing it out as my full-time personal smartphone ahead of my in-depth review so definitely come back for that to see what i think of the battery life the camera tech the performance all that good stuff but what do you guys reckon are you tempted by the xperia 5 mark 3 should be hitting the uk next month for 900 quid definitely quite a pricey handset but it's got some very cool and unique features packed away in there and at least it is cheaper than that flagship so we great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you